Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. All right. Here we go. Oh, God. Let me go offline. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Kiev Major. We're here with the opening heat Ten over on remain. Dota Major 2. I'm Zayori, joined by Draskal. We've got a great best of three. Miles Five Esports, formerly known as AdFinM, the runner-ups in the last major going up against Invictus Gaming. Draskal, what's going on, buddy? How you feeling? Uh-oh. Radiant Team Ban. <sighs> Dire Team Pick. Perfect. That, that, that was a team speak side. <laughs> Nah, it's no problem, right. but I was just saying, like, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to watch the game. You know, it's been a while since we've seen Adfinem, a.k.a. Mouse, play in, uh, in any real officials. But, you know, they, like you said, they were the runner-up at the last major, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to bring to the table here today. They've done the research. They ban out the, the Burning Juggernaut. That's one of the heroes that they, uh, they play pretty much constantly. I, th I think it's one of Burning's big four Five right now. He's played, like, Wraith King, Jug, uh, Lifestealer, and then Venge in the, the last games that they've been playing Resolve together, so... Time. Um, I like the ES ban into the Monkey King first pick. That really restricts Baboka's hero pool. Those are the two heroes that he kind of dominated with, obviously, right. in DAC. Um, so I'm liking what they're doing here so far. Question marks surrounding the Mouseport squad. I, I pulled up their history before this, and they have not played in anything. I mean, it's been like two months since we've seen officials uh, out of these guys. I know they've been boot camping for at least uh, two or three weeks. So high expectations, but definitely a tough matchup here. They'll have to play into a Legion Commander now, first pick from IG. Yeah, the, the important thing to note here, too, is that Mao's uh, obviously European-based team. I was hearing that a lot of the teams who were boot camping were pretty much all in Europe anyway. So I have a feeling that they had a really good time like getting good scrim partners and stuff and being able to you know find decent opponents to play with. So I'm kind of expecting yeah. uh, maybe... People will be surprised at what they're going to bring to the table here today. But the, the first pick, Legion Commander, in the Chinese scene, this hero has like, kind of just bursted forth, picked constantly. Like, incredibly strong laning phase, carries items exceptionally well. You know, at every stage in the game, the hero is a threat, good pickoff potential, kind of just offers pretty much everything, to be yeah. honest, especially in a, a meta that is as fight-oriented as this one. Yeah, absolutely. AoE damage, lockdown, can always retreat to the jungle for reliable farm. And you can't forget about uh, Press the Attack Ten being a cleanse. Remaining. That comes in handy uh, more often than not. Now Vengeful Spirit, second pick for IG. Flex pick here, I guess, could be a one roll, but uh, could also be likely that support. Yeah, it's, it's a good second pick here from IG. At least things pretty ambiguous, as you already said. And Burning, uh, he does play the hero. They've, they've played it a handful of times in the last couple of weeks. But, um, I mean, so far... Again, it, really the big question mark for me is, what is Mal's actually going to do? Because I, I did a lot yeah. of researching <laughs> on IG, and like I know what their heroes are, like I, I know what they like to play, I know what they like to do, but I just don't know what Mouse is going to do. Are they going to do like the old style where they pick like MNT Bounty Hunter? Although I guess Monkey King would technically be his hero anyway, but you know it's it's been a really really long time. So more than anything, I'm just curious to see how they uh, shape things up. Yeah, so far, nothing too out of the norm. You already talked about their early bans, and I guess at least worth mentioning here, Wisp, as well as the Treant Protector, taken out by IG Treant, just recently reintroduced back into Captain's Mode and still maintaining his seed, even after a couple of slight tweaks. I know le the Leech Seed Slow was a big one uh, that kind of altered his level 1, level 2 power, but still quite the threat, really obnoxious hero to play against, especially in the later game if he manages to get a little bit of farm. Yeah, I think that tree is probably like one of the strongest early game laning phase heroes. And I guess you probably yeah. wouldn't pair it with a Monkey King, though those are two heroes that Spartan does play. So yeah, it seems like, point. I guess in IG's putting a little bit more respect towards the support role where Mal's just know that, you know, IG play around Juggernaut exceptionally well. 
and they're a very objective based team so taking a very very long time for the, they, the second we do have a dc actually uh, thug and skylark did dc and i think skylark is still disconnected uh, of course spartan is drafting but maybe they were having a tech issue there possibly contributing but yeah, Keeper of the Light, a little bit of global map mobility here. Another good laner. Someone else that can retreat to the jungle and soak up a lot of farm if that mid-game slows down. Pretty, uh, Another pretty popular pick here. Very meta feels so far. Remaining. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure how much I like it versus a, an LC Reserve opening time. because you get a free dispel for the, the mana leak. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not to say that you should never pick Hoddle against Legion for that sole reason, but it's also a hero who offers you know, a decent amount of catch. But on the bright yeah. side, if you have a Monkey King running around all over the place on the map, there is going to be ample time for Coddle to, you know, either push out lanes, stack the woods, you know, whatever. He'll probably get a handful of items, which is one of the benefits of having that hero on your team. He enables a lot of other cores as well. Unfortunately, though, those cores that he does enable, uh, IG is going to ban one of them out, and the Naga Siren. Other heroes you can think of are like Storm, for example. We know Thug has played that in the past. But against yeah. Legion, you know, those types of heroes you normally are like forced into building Lincolns on and stuff like that. So um, I was going to take out the Warlock, another very teamfight centric hero. Um, during the, the during DAC, it was very, very teamfight oriented. But, you know, there's been a couple of minor Five changes since then. Remaining. We'll see if there's going to be a bit more split pushing in the meta now. Yep. Time will tell. Both sides with pretty open-ended drafts thus far. Uh, quickly to circle back to the mana leak coddle thing. You know, I, I feel like the last couple coddles I've seen at least haven't even gotten mana leak in the laning stage, and it's just been all about yeah. uh, maxing out the ponies as well as the chakra. Yeah, that that is actually true. I mean, most of the time now, you know, you go one zero two or two yeah. zero one, depending on the situation. Most of the time, you're right. You absolutely do want to max the, the chakra. So, I'm just looking at it in the the sense of it's obviously offering good deep push, map mobility, and it's yeah. still, you know, an ambiguous pick. You don't really know what Miles is going for at the moment. I'm just looking at IG currently and Dieting like their opening back. seems like they're much more prepared to fight head on. Whereas Miles, you know, Monkey Radiant King, very low base armor now. Still yeah. very strong hero, but I have yet to really see anything from the side of Miles that makes me think that they're looking to fight. Yeah, right, Monkey King, as you said, still a good hero, but I think a shell of his former self. He's finally been tweaked Ten enough times that it feels remain. like he's come down to this kind of human level of balance where he's manageable, Five and some heroes can remain. actually still, go blow Still super blow good. Still, <laughs> still super, super good. good. But, you know, it's, it's getting to a point where teams are, are starting to have uh, good feels against the Monkey King. And also Vengeful Spirit, you know, having a scouting tool with the Wave Ricky. of uh, Terror, also a, a great thing to have. But now Ricky Dieting. Maru picked up here for IG as their third after we see a fourth ban on Shadow Fiend, uh, as well as the Life Stealer. Yeah, I like this a lot from IG. It's a great thing in the early game to have a hero like Ricky against Coddle. You have tremendous base armor. You can walk around with like a, an Orb of Venom or whatever Ten and just seconds, absolutely remain. wreak havoc on that low armor hero. And the other nice thing is, too, that's, that's their vision Five establishment now. Remain. So IG have the Ricky for the vision. You know, obviously Miles have the Monkey King. He's going to be hopping around in the trees so looking for ganks and whatnot. I would probably say that... Um, Ricky's kind of like a version of Monkey King because, you know, you can get those really deep wards for free. It's very hard for Miles now to try to keep track of where IG has and doesn't have vision. That's one yeah. really big bonus that he gives you so far. And they don't really have any catch for the Ricky at all between the support Ten heroes. So remaining. we'll yeah. see how uh, Miles want to cope with that. Well, there you go. It's Axe. And that's Radiant some great lockdown hit. for Ricky. You get in range of that Berserker's Call, pulls him right out of invisibility. Uh, Axe also just very popular right now. I've heard a lot of rumblings that he is, he is the guy. He, he's the hero. He's exceptionally strong, yeah. Like, Blade yeah. Mill, I, I've probably said that that item needs to be changed like 800 times <laughs> so far. Like, I, I think that on him in particular, it feels the most powerful for obvious reasons. You know, 3.2 second disable, pierces BKB. Blade Mail pierces BKB if you're an auto attack based hero or, you know, what have you. But uh, the thing that I'm really kind of concerned about now for Miles is after seeing the axe, you know, this Venge we talked about in the first two can very easily transition into a core. And yeah. then you're going to have potentially Vengeful Spirit Ten plus an unpicked support in the bottom lane against what could potentially be the offlane axe. Five, so now yeah, I'm kind of wondering what are Miles' lanes going to look like? Because at the oh, moment I'm feeling like IG oh, may have some kind of advantage. So team. OD is going to be the choice here for the mid. Uh, if it is the Ember OD matchup, I guess OD does okay, but I don't think they're going to kill the Ember. Like, that is an exceptionally hard hero to take down, given their yeah. current support duo of, of the Coddle and the Monkey King. 
Yeah, I worry a little bit for Mao's that if this is the position one Venge, that perhaps they're going to come online a little bit slow. OD, not quite. He's still a lane dominator, but it takes him a little while to come online. And if he falls victim to one or two Ricky ganks in that delicate state when he's either committed to the Midas or still working on the Hurricane Pike, you know, he needs a couple of core items before he can really feel comfortable fighting. And to, to your point about Axe in the offlane, this is not going to be an easy offlane. So stands to reason he's going to spend at least some time in the jungle which, you know, it means that that's time IG has uh, opportunity for their four and their five to roam around and put pressure on. So, yeah, I, I, I could see this IG lineup getting a lot of early momentum and just taking control. We, we, we Avenge Ricky Ember. I mean, those are three heroes that can really excel in the lane. Here we Ten go. Sven now fifth ban from IG. Yeah, the Sven, Sven ban's amazing. Five they have a, a lot of armor. Uh, based heroes, as in, you know, Ricky does right-click damage, Venge, Legion, they all synergize very time. well um, yeah. with minus armor, and then alternatively, Five Warcry kind of destroys them. Plus, no reliable uh, BKB piercing damage at this point. So, yeah, it looks like they are anticipating it is going to be a core Venge as they ban out the Crystal Maiden, so Mal's actually know what yeah. they're they're getting into in regards to the picks, so maybe the idea is that if you have an Axe and a Keeper of the Light, the Ricky cannot stop both of them simultaneously. So he'll have to kind of choose what he wants to do. Does he want to go mid? Seconds. Does he want to hunt, you know, the Keeper of the Light? Does he want to, you know, stop the axe from getting creeps in the jungle? That's probably his worst choice. Ooh. And it looks like it's going to be a, a troll last pick here. So some very right. heavy, heavy late game damage coming in for Mouse Sports. A call into, you know, Battle Trance with an OD yeah. on your team, you're just shredding heroes. Like, there is no living through that. So yeah. late game secured. Uh, the Coddle pick now makes a lot more sense. If the Axe gets a good time to Blink Dagger, we could see, you know, Miles Fourth potentially look to take remaining. this lead. Absolutely. Uh, and it also helps solve one problem their draft really did have was pushing power. OD, Notorious, not for hitting towers very hard, but Battle Trance solves Five some of those issues. IG, what's the final pick? And it's a Phoenix. Okay. A little sustainability, some more team fight. And That's it looks like it really... will indeed be the safe lane Venge. That's a really strange pick to me. You know, normally yeah. you see Troll Warlord, and the last thing you want to do is to pick counter. Phoenix because they battle right. trance, and then the egg just, <laughs> you know, pops. But there is a good thing about it in this game. I will say that if you get Blink called, and you're any of these cores, or you throw out a duel, it's fantastic for Sunray. It's really, really good for being able to just, you know, heal through the potential Blade Mail Axe Call, or heal and damage through the Legion Commander duel. So there is a lot of synergy there with a way that they can play it, but it's very, very dangerous in how you have to egg. I suppose he's relying on, you know, Ember and Legion being those frontline heroes, so he's gonna just have to egg at the perfect time. Ten and also there's the, the synergy between, you know, Smoke Cloud and Egg as well. So even if you yeah. hit super fast, if you Smoke Cloud, you can't hit the egg. So we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, IG coming off of their DAC win. Um, I, I would say no surprise that they're probably the, the ones expected to take it here. Uh, yeah, de definitely favorites. And just some nice natural synergy. Ember Spirit does a lot of AoE damage. Uh, even Legion Commander with over overwhelming odds if they're grouped up trying to finish off the Phoenix Egg. So there is some cool synergy. Um, and I honestly, I still think that even though the late game is pretty secured here um, for the Greeks, that that early mid game timing push around the position one Venge is going to be a little bit scary. And if they falter there, that's where this uh, this game could fall apart. Drasko, we've got some predictions. Should we uh, should we go through them real quick? Yeah, sure. Why not? We got time. All right. So I'm thinking IG here. First barracks kill. Oh, I forgot about the predictions. This is great. Yeah, I, think, I think IG as well. Up by 10. Um, is that team based or hero based? Team. Team with most runes. I would say I IG probably. IG. Yeah, you got a Ricky moving around. I reckon he'll pick up quite a few. Team with the most kills at the end of the game. Basically, who do you think is going to win? IG. <laughs> and player with the longest streak. Ooh. Ember, possibly? That's kind of what I, I was thinking. Yeah, I think OP will probably have the, the longest streak. All right. As these predictions go, it's sort of which team do you think is going to win influences a lot of uh, what you want to pick. Monkey King here, the ever-elusive tree. Nothing suspicious. I mean, here, uh, boys. the funny thing is, if if Maus do win, any like three other heroes could potentially have the largest streak. You know, Skylark, Thug, or Madara could all have it because they're all just you know one dunks right. heroes. Od hits for like Laguna Blade levels of damage every auto attack during a late game. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it is a yeah. very interesting idea though from IG. Like the Phoenix pick, the more I think about it, it can be like one of those things where you distract the enemy by hitting Egg during Battle Trance, so they have to hit it. 
You know, they mm -hmm. can't hit anything else. They have to hit the egg. So That's it right. could be like a... An interesting way to think about it. We'll see an invade down bottom. Burning drops the stun onto Skylark. And it looks like Mal's will get the better of the runes. Three for one. No first blood. A little bit of damage exchange down bottom. IG kind of get the better of it, but... They miss out on the rune, but Boca now with the rotation in. Spartan could actually be in a little bit of trouble. But Boca opens another stun from Burning, and now the follow-up right clicks. That will be the first blood. Picked up by Ricky. Very nice. Yeah, he Good didn't start. anticipate that the Ricky was starting bottom. Like, Boboka didn't show at all. He was just kind of chilling there. And then uh, as soon as Spartan went to go back in, I assumed to potentially drop a ward. Just gets uh, stunned and killed. Yeah. But Boca now taking some return damage. Check out the other lane. So we've got the OD Ember mid. Four man shield already on the Ember. We have a crucial item. And up top, it will be XXS on the Legion Commander. Up against these two, the Monkey King. Still having some fun. And of course, Madara here on the Troll Warlord. Tough lane for the LC. I mean, it's, it's not like impossible for him. It's not going to be the nicest time in the world, but it's an interesting thing that's happening so far as Spartan could be going yeah. down again here. This looks like another kill, quite possibly. One more, and Baboka gets it, but he will have to trade his own life. Tower shots will finish him off. They trade one for one, but obvious advantage here for IG. So I guess the idea from Maus is that they want to restrict Boboka's movement as much as they can by forcing him to be bottom. Like, the dual lane basically says, all right, you know, you could potentially win this if your Maus at the, uh, the Ricky isn't here. Nice TP out here from Skylark. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be just fine. But yeah, I think that, you know, if you don't have to worry about the hero being off the map 24-7, Ricky isn't nearly as big of a nuisance. So the dual offlane thing, I, I kind of get it. But at the same time, you know, Coddle, he can be, you know, jungle stacking. He can be looking to farm and all these other things. So it looks right. like Spartan will uh, go back for the bounty rune here. He's going to get all the Boca Boca takes it. it. Oh, God, this is such a suffering moment here for Spartan. Yeah, very painful. The Orb of Venom doing a lot of work as Baboka chases him down. He drops down a ward up top to get some vision. Baboka, thinking about diving this, he, he goes into the tower. In. One more, and he gets it. Again, he's probably going to have to trade his life, but nice solo kill there. Fade away. Haste it up uh, tree. He has a haste. That is don't see that every day. <laughs> it's a tree on a Nimbus. Here we go. The wraparound finds a Legion Commander. Oh, Snipes he got the, the last creep. Hit. Oh, my. That's pesky. He's gonna make him shrine too. That's a that's a lot of effect. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of effect out of that haste. It's really nice by MNT. Okay. Couldn't have actually asked for more out of that situation. He gets the freaking big centaur and he makes him pop the haste. Both the position fours, man, getting a lot done. So now Ricky. Yeah, the, the he's thing kinda... is. Oh, go ahead. There's a, there's a lot of emphasis on MNT this game, too, though. Like, Bobaka has already done, like, a really nice job stealing the bounty rune, getting, you know, credit for pretty much all three of the kills on his team so far. He's been there for all of them. He's put a lot of fear into uh, Spartan and Skylark in the offlane. Mm -hmm. But I guess he can't really go that far. Getting a kill on Thug is going to be very difficult. I guess he's best served just being here bottom. But they do have a sentry now. Uh, Spartan's still level one on the Coddle, trying to blast down this wave. But Boboka hot on his trail. Kind of pushes him back, and the rest of his team starts to pick up some of these creeps. The Coddle does manage to grab that one baby Wild Wing Ripper. But a small victory here as Burning finishes off the large Seder, the big prize in the camp. So Coddle at least gets level 2 out of it. That'll be his chakra. Now maybe he can start farming a little bit. Might see some more emphasis on stacking. As we talked about, one of those supports that can definitely make uh, efficient use out of the jungle if he's left alone for even just a couple of minutes. Yeah, Bobaka is like just putting all of his emphasis on, you know, going for the bounty runes, making sure that Spartan doesn't really get anything at all. He's pretty much committed his entire early game to ensuring that the Coddle has to play as ineff ineffectively as possible. And that's yeah. a really, really annoying thing for him. He's even gone as far as to take the uh, aggressive bounty rune again, but Spartan makes the proper movement. You know, he goes, okay, you're going to go to my bounty rune. I'm going to yours. And he denies the invis there from Q. So mm -hmm. both, uh, both team supports pretty much doing everything they need to do. Yeah, Dyer getting slightly better farm out of these lanes, but down bottom it's going to be Skylark initiated on 3v1. Magic Missile from Burning, not going to be able to TP out this time. He does get off the Berserker's Call, almost kills Q. Gets him down pretty damn low, but it's not enough for a kill. And it will just be uh, another pickup for IG here, 4-5 to five as we, or pardon me, 4-2 to two as we cross the 5 minute mark. OP taking some damage mid, but Thug not going to be able to find a kill. The mid matchup is kind of a... 
really good thing that Mao's are getting out of the early game because, you know, against OD, if he wants to, he can make you not really get that much CS no matter what hero you are. Like, Astral Imprisonment against Melee is just a, a total nightmare to deal with, so he is beating out OP a little bit, not by a, a wide margin, but they are winning two out of three other lanes. So I would say that, you know, kind of quote-unquote sacrificing Spartan for this early game is working out, even though they've given up, you know, the first blood and a couple more kills. Yeah. I mean, even Madara, he's ahead of burning by 8 CS, 9 CS or so. It's a, a nice little disparity out of this laning phase. Checking in on LC, now level 5. Actually ended up doing quite well in the lane. You were right here, Drasko. Really not too bad. He's picked up the Iron Talon and not a huge amount of farm, but very solid Radiant's XP game thus far. The main thing for Maus is they want Skylark's Blink Dagger, obviously, to be as timely as possible. And every time Baboka leaves the lane, you can see the sheer amount of pressure that Maus is able to put on this farming bench and this kind of solo phoenix down here. It's it's not really... Bobaka can't really go anywhere else. And this is yeah. going to be the main theme of the game. You know, that Ricky was meant to be able to create space around the map and just kind of cause problems. But really all he's been able to do so far is grab a couple of bounties and sit here. So maybe Maus's plan to pick the axe and kind of force that dual aggro lane is doing exactly what it needs to. Yeah, so far. I mean, Baboka, level 3, he picked up uh, the, the kill on the Coddle. I guess that's the one other big standout play we've seen, but, you know, kill on a Coddle is only worth so much here. We'll see a Middle rotation lane. mid. Astral, yeah, now right into the Illuminate. Pounce down, and Ember will just scurry away. Stun comes out. Thug drops the hammer, but it's not enough damage. About 80 HP left as the Ember survives and walks away. One more auto attack, and they would have had it there. Yeah, it was unfortunate, the timing of that, because he hit six, like, he's barely level six right now. If they had gone, you know, even 15, 20 seconds sooner, that would have been a much easier kill to get, because he had the remnant to be able to retreat under his tower. So, unfortunate yeah. for Miles, a little bit of wasted resources, but not the end of the world. Yep, burning now level six. He's got his phase boots complete, and Skylark soon to be level six as well. So, ultimates coming out all over the place. Meanwhile, up top... Primal Spring across, off the mark from MNT as XXS heads the other way. All right. Yeah, that was a bit of a misfire on the spring there, but it happens. You know, you kind of expect yeah. the movement of a player and they just go the other way. Yeah. Baboka, the walking ward right now. This will do kind of giving nice. the intel. He sees two. I mean, it's sort of worth it when he knows that, uh, you know, two heroes are committed right here. They might be able to leech a little bit of XP. They're going to set up on the Coddle, it looks like. Rotation all the way in from the Phoenix. Q with the Sun Ray. Baboka with the right clicks. A few more and they'll find it. Axe now on the way in, doing a lot of damage to the Phoenix. But there's the Icarus dive away. Ricky now left all alone. Monkey King with the dust. They do actually find him. And Baboka caught between a rock and a hard place as Madara makes the rotation and sets up an easy kill. They TP'd a lot just to kill that Ricky. Yeah. You want to talk about space created. I mean, they even put a sentry down uh, to the left a little bit a yeah. while ago just to make sure that he wasn't, you know, going to soak EXP from the stack. So, you know, as a team that plays heroes like Bounty Hunter and Ricky in the past, Miles definitely understands, like, the movement <laughs> patterns of the hero very well. Yeah. Still, their core's looking pretty All middle. good. The margin's closing as OD. Yeah, initiated on. Remnant across, and it'll be another kill for Baboka. As he secures the last hit, six to three, and that level levels things out that much more. I guess he wasn't we'll expecting. The yeah, there, there was no extra sentry, so they couldn't have mid sentried. So Boboka respawns immediately, walks mid. Yes. You know, OP has that haste rune, and it's just there's not really much you can do. Cloud into searing chains and a triple remnant, you're gonna die pretty much no matter what hero you are. So yeah. a nice uh, little bit of a rotation there coming in from IG, getting something from you know three heroes teleporting bottom to kill a Ricky. Maybe a bit of an overcommittal. And they're going to get a lot of damage on this tier 1 top as well. Looks like it. I doubt Mal's will sacrifice it. They'll start to rotate heroes. And yeah, Troll Warlord's already on his way back up. Vlad's going to be the first real item on Troll after phase boots. No big surprise. Great value item on this hero. Life steal really goes a long way. And great for grouping up also. Yeah, I think Helps that... the Monkey King. Mal's actually wants to 5-man a lot more than IG this game. Like, IG have tremendous amounts of pick potential. Between the Ricky, you know, the Legion's eventually gonna get Blink Dagger, Ember Spirit's highly mobile. They're perfectly okay with going into, like, this skirmish-oriented Dota game. Whereas Maus, they get one good Blink Initiation, 
they get the battle trance and they just melt face. So mm -hmm. kind of a difference in play style here. But you can see IG, they've capitalized quite well on the early game movement here. Ricky leeching a little bit of XP, soon to be level 5. LC begins the quest for the Blink Dagger. About 800 gold towards it, so still a bit of farming to do for XXS. And how's the axe doing? 1600 oh, gold. Oh, he wants it so bad. Bottom tower is under he might be able to get it here. It's going to fly right overhead. And that's one, Very that's nice. two. He's got the damage. Well, missed a kill on the Coddle as uh, we were watching that. Looks like Bernie picked up a freebie down bottom. Let's be honest, the Courier is more important than the Coddle right now. <laughs> You're right. You're totally right. Here we go. Maybe next time he's up on the trees, scouting it out as OP jumps forward. They won't quite find the initiation. Pesky Monkey King, just a little bit too difficult to track down right now, and they'll rotate out. They'll actually send the Ricky down bottom to join with Burning. You know, it's really interesting, this dynamic between the Monkey King and the Ricky, because... Both, oh, Skylar. actually, hold on. Skylar, Ooh, he's a goner. A lot of damage coming out there. That Benjora not leveled up. So that is a maxed out wave of terror. That minus armor, though. Wow. It's a cool yeah, build. Bobica, he's also got phase and he's got max cloak and dagger. So he's actually going for the sheer damage oriented build rather than going for the max cloud build. XXS. Give me trouble. Looks like he's all right. Press the attack will ensure the survival. But yeah, between that and. Uh, that build coming out of the Venge, man, that minus six armor goes a long way on an axe without uh, Berserker's call up. Nice kill. They made him look like tissue paper. Looked like they were killing a support. Yeah, axe in the early game, especially with the nerf to Tranquil Boots as well. Very important to keep in mind, oh, axe's yeah. base armor is only four, so he true. doesn't get that, that little bit of a buffer anymore. He kind of just melts like butter. Yeah, four, and then you think about that minus six on the wave, and yep, now it makes sense. Here we go, Boboka kind of scouting things out once again. Skylark in this really delicate state where he's got 1,600 gold, a lot of unreliable, really doesn't want to die, but also feels obligated to show his head out of the jungle here. Connell now rotating over, but Paboka, he's on it. He's level 6 also, so now the Ricky with Tricks of the Trade, much more elusive, as the Midas now completed for OD. 12-minute Midas out on Thug. Oh, there's, a, there's a Midas on Burning as well. So ah. it's double Midas gaming. And almost at uh, the exact same timing as well. Yeah, I think the Midas on OD is... I like it a lot more than on Venge. I mean, obviously Midas is still an extremely good item, and it's a bit more gold-oriented now than it used to be, where it used to be, you know, people just buy it for the EXP and the talents and whatnot. But right. um, on OD, you're just so much more of a devastating right-clicker, so the attack speed, I think, just benefits him that much more. And yeah. obviously he's... He's had a pretty good laning phase, you know, he's third highest in regards to overall CS, so might as well if you're this far ahead. All right, things slowing down a little bit here, 13 minutes in. Farm picks up, any other big core items around the corner? Looks like Ember, is he going for a blade mail? Am I seeing this right? Uh, I would appear so, yeah. It's okay. very good against OD and Troll, especially when you know, you're, you're expecting the chain of initiation to go something like blink into battle trance into dead. So if you just pop your blade mail and like aggressively remnant, the OD really doesn't want to hit you because he's always going to be reflecting damage and taking damage from searing chains plus the, the flame guard. So you kind of kill him really, really fast if he's not careful. Also, XXS has a blink. Here we go. Duel onto the troll, but a nice blind from the coddle. Not going to be enough. It's still a victorious duel for the LC. Now burning with a slot forward. Spartan in a lot of trouble. OP joins the fight, but now it's burning on the back foot. Gets slam dunked by Skylark. Thug still perhaps in trouble. Couple of right clicks. Not going to be there, and he will make it back to the high ground. Still a good fight for IG. Of course, they get the duel victory, but they lose burning, and well, maybe it's not over yet. Skylark just now has money for the Blink Dagger, trying to get to the side shop. He will buy it, blinks back to safety, and that new Blink Dagger might actually keep him alive. Now he tries to bring in the Legion Commander. Nice Astral, keeps the Axe alive, but Radiant still have this fight. Monkey King goes down, and it's too much. Mal's bit off way more than they could chew, and they're dropping like flies here, Draskal. It's a double kill for OP on the Ember, and looking at that recap, it ends up much more in IG's favor than we initially thought. God, that was such a good blink reveal from IG. It could not have actually gone any better. So basically, they get the kill on the troll. We yes. talked about the Sunray and the dual combination at the draft screen, which is, I feel like, the main reason why Q decided to pick Phoenix against troll. 
killed him. And then before he was able to respawn and pop Battle Trance, Q pops his egg. So they can't hit it fast enough to get the kill onto the tower. Yeah. That is like some mo that is like the most next level thing I've seen in a very, very long time. Because if it weren't for that egg and the sunray coming out as well, they wouldn't have gotten the bonus kill on Skylark. And now they actually know that he has blink and it didn't do anything the first time. So really, yeah. really big win for IG. Absolutely, and uh, we see it on the graphs as well. It's about a 4K net worth and gold lead at the 15-minute mark. Vengeful Spirit very happily seated as number one on net worth. Looks like it'll be Hurricane Pike on the way next. Pretty standard item build, and now the five-man for IG will begin. Troll Warlord, he's going to move into a Sanjanyasha, it looks like, but still very far away. And this is part of that delicate timing where Malz doesn't really want to fight, but they'll still find something. They trade Tier 1 for Tier 1 as they slip push down bottom, about the best they can hope for right now. Though Thug, mid lane, Baboka, he's got the angry eyes here, Draskal. Now, this is a really hard situation for Malz. Like, they really want to fight with the egg being on cooldown. But Supernova, you know, it's only 110 seconds. It's less than two minutes. It's not really that long. And they really need Skylark to be the person who initiates the fight for them. And then when you're showing on the map as the axe, yeah, okay, just he bails out of the lane now. But this, oh god. Funny looking courier. But because just, he's spotting out everything, man. He just sees yep. everything that Mauser are doing movement-wise. It's so difficult to move around the map without being noticed. And IG can just, you know, pick and choose their opportunities. They, they're not really in any particular rush given the start. I mean, sure, you don't want to just let Mouse free farm, but if they can pressure the map, control it well enough, and kind of avoid that five versus five confrontation until they're sure they can win it, I think that IG can uh, kind of just maintain their lead here. Yeah. Ricky picking up the Illusion Rune, probably uh, one of the best heroes to pick up Illusions. They stay invisible, of course, so uh, literally just gives you a, a mobile ward on the other side of the map. Very nice. Sees where the Troll Warlord is as Madara rotates into enemy jungle. He's uh, got the Yasha, so SNY not too far away. Good item on Troll. I think it was recently buffed a little bit. They just yeah, the main chance keeps keeping those numbers upward. Yeah. They, they keep making it now. like 40% to hit on melee or whatever. Sooner or later, it's just going to be like a Scotty, where just every single time a <laughs> melee hits you, it's just going to maim. Yeah. So, great item, especially at this stage of the game, just gives Troll a, you know, a pumped up drum, sort of. So, here we go. For me. Smoke from IG. This is like super dangerous because once the the Legion finishes Blade Mail, like no amount of itemization is going to be able to save you from that like chain of initiation. That's the thing that is really going to hurt uh, Miles the most, I think, because they can just kill the OD every single time if they get the duel off. But you know, obviously Thug can be there to banish. Okay, aggressive. Yo. Duel onto the OD. He's taking a lot of damage. Monkey King drops the Wukong's command, but it's not enough. They lose two straight away. Now Troll Warlord locked down. It's three dead immediately on the side of IG. Supernova will go off and not going to catch any stuns, but of course it does ensure Phoenix's survival. They'll finish off the tower in another devastating fight for Mao's fans around the world. IG completely in control here, Draskal. That's the worst way to start a fight for Mouse is to pretty much use your only escape item to go forward and then use your only other escape ability to start a fight and it's not on the legion like that's the only way that mouse can fight is if you know thug sitting in the back somebody else besides him gets dueled he banishes the dual target to save them and then they fight around that if the chain of initiation goes down in any other way where xxs is able to close the gap and duel the od the fight is like unsalvageable almost from that point because that hero who gets dueled with the sunray is dead every single uh -oh. freaking time and uh oh yeah did baboka just get baited here he's got to the trade now madara rotates in almost oh finished God. off spartan able to blink strike away but he did get dusted here and i think he'll finally die <laughs> the smoke cloud making that it was slow like... and steady <laughs> space the created, 4v1 actually. <laughs> look at how many sentries they have man they have four sentries placed in their own woods at the moment and they dusted like Spartan, you know, normally on this hero, you're allowed to, you know, get some items because you just illuminate every single creep wave. But the main issue is that he's committing so much money to buying detection and they're not winning fights that there's no supplemental income. So he's never going to get a four staff. He's never going to get a glimmer cape until mouse start actually winning these fights. Because all the available farm on the map that's in the jungle is being eaten by the heroes that don't want to sit in lane. They're just like Spartan, go to a lane or stand behind somebody and spam Q, because we don't want to be the ones who die. Yeah. 
All right, things again slowing down. And looking at the graph, it's now a 7,500 net worth lead. Baboka, he's uh, got the Yasha now. Continuing to press forward. Non-stop aggression coming out of the Ricky. I mean, he has no reason to be scared. If four heroes are following him and he gets dusted and they place three sentries, I'm pretty sure he's sitting there going, yeah, all right, I'm okay with this. It's, it's just <laughs> yeah. the amount of work that he's done, even you know, going far as back as a laning stage, we were kind of thinking, okay, maybe it's kind of rough on him having to sit here the whole time, but he managed to make it work. Yeah, OD now has the four staff. Items starting to come together for Mal's. Continuing to put pressure on themselves, feeling like they can't get stagnant Radiant and just resort, uh, resort back to farming. Top tower they will try to pressure this tier two in the bottom lane. Uh, also, BOT is up on the Ember Spirit, so now he's kind of all over the map. Baboka dusted down in the top lane as Mal's rotate and their entire squad. Ricky does have friends nearby, but they won't get there in time. The fight will continue, though. LC gets off the duel. They bring down the Monkey King almost immediately. Duel will not finish uh, in some extra damage, but it still locks down OD long enough for it to turn into a kill. Supernova not going to be popped either as Coddle gets finished off. It's another great fight for IG. One for three, losing only their Ricky. Man, this is this is actually getting kind of brutal. The funny part about that engagement too was uh, the Legion actually messed up and didn't blade mill, and Thug still died. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here going, <laughs> "All right, well, they cannot execute, you know, the absolute perfect team fight and still crush it that hard." Mouse though, immediate smoke up. They really want to try to get something out of this. Yep. XXS actually hangs around, maybe long enough for them to do this, but Madara, he loses his smoke. And IG just retreat. They make it out. No harm done. Oh, man, from bad to worse for Maus, they're just not able to find any kind of openings. The SMY only way... out for the troll now, but doesn't feel like much. They need to fight to start by the axe catching a hero that is impactful. Like, it can't be the Ricky, it can't be... I mean, I guess anyone but the Ricky is okay, but if it's him, then, you know, every single time Thug walks forward to try to get damage out on that target, he's just going to get uh -oh. and oh my, okay. Well, found the Ricky. Skylar catches him. Yeah. He didn't even have dust. That was just a nice... Have... Ricky showed himself, and Skylark just jumped right on him. It was just a fast reaction, got a couple of spins thanks to the creep wave, and that's it. I mean, Ricky does a lot of damage, but he's not very tanky here. He's, you know... Only 900 HP. Yeah, he went the phase boots Yasha build, so no stats. Yeah. Okay, might get a pick on Legion. This is good. Follow-up kill here. A lot of heroes from Mal's. They've got big damage, and LC won't even be able to pop the blade mail. Just like that, two down around the map, and now Monkey King. And it goes in onto the Phoenix, but there are reinforcements nearby for both squads. Up to the high ground, blinding light, breaks it apart. Baboka nearby. There is no shrine. It's down for a minute and a half, so Miles could try to charge up the high ground and pick a fight if they're so inclined. But instead, they turn towards the Roche Pit and with LC dead. Let's see how Kyle nice can feel. Axe, he finds the catch on Ricky. The follow-up damage is there, and now maybe they can actually do this Roche. Searing Chains connects on two. Follow-up Sunray from the Phoenix. Nice chip damage. Miles kind of on the defensive. Double remnant forward. Oh, we're actually not doing much damage here. He's taking huge damage. OD drops it in. That'll be the end of OP's mega kill streak. Big lag from the Monkey King. And it looks like IG are in full retreat mode. Q on a sliver of HP will survive. Mao's still lingering around the pit, but they will not commit for it. So it does that cost was... IG quite a bit, but they kind of get what they want. They they stop the Roche. It was very, very needed from Mouse to get those fight to get that fight and then those kills. As soon as they knew that yeah. the Legion was dead. They were like kind of skeptical about going up to the shrine because it's not just about if the shrine's up, it, it does, you know, XXS have buyback. Because if he buys back and just blinks in, gets a duel, then that fight is smashed, and then IG just walk right into Roche and take it out from under you. That's why they were kind of, you know, hovering in the area for so long. Very nice sentry placement by Spartan, gets the pick off on the Ricky after Skylark blinks in, and then they're just able to keep that pressure mounted on IG so that. They know for sure that if they're not going to get Roche, IG isn't either. That was the main goal after the, the first pickoff yeah. happened. So now, 
You know, a couple more items coming out from the side of Mal's. I think the Hurricane Pike was uh, showcased there. Unfortunate, actually, for the Ember. He he went for the double remnant in, but he missed his Searing Chains. I didn't catch it at first, but then I, I clicked on him afterwards, and he didn't hit it because of the Banish, and he also missed MNT, which ultimately resulted in him yeah. dying as well. So, five-man smoke here. You know, all of a sudden, this feels really in grasp for Mal's. It's only a 5-6k net worth difference, and as we talked about, their late game is nothing to scoff at. Will this IG smoke find what it's looking for, though? They move right into the Roche pit. Dyer not in a great position to contest. They will TP in, but look at this Ricky illusion giving so much intel on the high ground. They see exactly what Spartan's up to, and IG should have an advantage here given this intel. They're going to have to move soon. Oh, they oh, found they find the Monkey King. Oh, that's huge. 4v5, Illuminate. Amazing. To block out the pit like this. Tricks of the trade from Ricky, but Skylark is oh, caught no. up on the high ground. They're going to go one for one. It's Baboka for Monkey King, and with that IG, they've got to back out. I don't know. Rocha's below half. I mean, if you leave the area, you could Niles potentially might be, be forfeiting this. It. Well, it's it's very dangerous to try to snipe because again, one duel, even if the Ricky's dead, yeah. they could potentially go for this. Wait, okay. The the Ember does have a remnant out, so he can show on the bottom lane. I was going to say, if he didn't have a remnant and he shows, there's a DD as well. Oh my god. Okay, this could be dangerous. Oh. With Battle Trance, Troll can do a lot of work here. But they're not going to commit for us. Just take a look at Radiant Vision. They do have some around the pit, this Observer, below the Ancients. They're going back to smoke. The they're, walking, out and they're walking really far yeah. back. Yeah, they, they want to smoke. They want to like try to get into the Roshan pit. They're even going to show Thug mid, so maybe IG aren't going to expect it. But the DD is going to kill the Roshan super fast. Remember, this is half HP. Yep. Half the oh, this is so the nice. Damage, but it's going to be more so than nice. enough time. Beautifully done by Mouse. Also, Shadowblade now up on Troll. I don't know if Madara's revealed this. He might have picked it up when they backed out. But they do get the Roche, they pick up the Aegis, and again glancing at net worth. And Mao's hanging on to this game. Uh, light at the end of the tunnel, Maelstrom out on the Ember Spirit, but... Whew, we got a game on our hands here, Drasko. Looks like IG might run away with it for a minute, but now things are really getting interesting. Never underestimate the Greeks, Sayori. Never. But yeah, yes, it, it was a... Spirit, buddy. A nice couple of pickoffs into a very fortuitous double damage rune. That... Like, if that rune doesn't spawn there, there, I think there is a very less likelihood that that smoke would work. But it was just really yeah. good, you know, quick thinking. You spot it, uh, the Ember's Remnant disappeared, and then they're like, okay, now's our time. Walk back to the Tier 2 smoke, run right to the Roshan Pit. Maybe a little bit of, yeah. um, little bit of a mistake, actually, by IG, not just having Bobaka kind of hovering around the area, because you know that you left Roshan at half-life. So there is always right. opportunity they can go for a steal, but they, they got kind of relaxed in their posturing on the map and, you know, Mao's punishing for it. So very well played. Well, even though IG get punished, a couple of big pickups here. BKB now on Burning's Venge, and also a BKB is up on the Legion Commander. So two 10-second bounce of Magic Immunity for this next fight. Should be huge for the Radiant Squad. Also, Halbert queued up for Legion Commander. Not an item we get to see too often, but amazing against Troll, at least before he gets BKB. Madara charging forward. Remember, he does have the Shadow Blade. He gets dusted, but he's just too damn speedy. They can't quite catch him. Hold that thought as LC does grab him indeed. That'll be the end of the Aegis, and they should be able to kill him twice. Troll has no friends nearby, and poor Madara will be locked down and brought down. Sad story here for this troll warlord. The advantage that Adfin or uh, pardon me, Mouse had. Well, it's expired. Yeah, he just stuck around. You know that one more creep, one more wave kind of mentality gets to you, and you can't really fault him too much for it. When you know you still feel like even after that Roshan and everything, you're still behind, right? So you need to kind of try to squeeze every ounce of net worth out of the map that you can. Unfortunate that he gets picked off in that that scenario because. You know, the Aegis could have potentially allowed them to fight, you know, at the tier one mid. And that's a really big tower for yeah. them to take at a, in a, you know, with almost 30 minute game they haven't taken the tier one mid. So yeah, that, that's a really big bummer for, uh, for Mouse. And as you were talking about the Halberd, it's a anticipatory purchase because he knows that the OD is going to buy Lincolns. And you absolutely need Halberd into Lincolns. It's like the cheapest, it's the cheapest, most effective okay. Lincolns breaker for Legion. Ah, all right. Yeah, the uh, Lincolns is already up on OD. I was thinking it's uh, really great just against Troll. Also, because there's a window uh, where he doesn't have MKB, where you have a little bit of evasion. But uh, yeah, Troll's going to have actually... BKB almost immediately here. So 
LC is really interesting as a hero because you actually want to be hit. You don't want to actually That's dodge true. the attacks, but you need... You want the moment of courage, yeah. Right, and you don't want to buy, like, four staff because it just doesn't really do anything for the hero, so... Uh, Halberd just right. happens to be, like, the best bang for your buck when it comes to uh, Lincoln's okay. breaking technology. I like it. It makes sense. What? It does. It has a pretty long range. Like, I always think of Atos as, you know, it's like... It's pretty super big, Super yeah. long cast range. Yeah, so Halberd is on a similar playing field. Yep, no animation either. So you can just, like, blink in. You can actually shift it if you really want. It's hard, but you can do it. And then you just get the duel. Mm. So it's going to be, you know, Thug is going to have a small window to react, but it's not going to... You're going to have to be fast. Yeah. All right, tier two mid. Looks like it'll be turned to rubble as IG commences the five man. Splitting all over the place, but a duel as they catch Spartan. A little extra damage going the way of XXS. And with that pickoff, they might start chipping at this high ground tier three tower. Top, they wanted to go on the Ember, but he just remnants forward. And now there are five IG heroes knocking on the front door of the base. Burning gets the press the attack. And all of a sudden, this tower is getting shredded here, Draskal. They don't have a glyph for this. And that's going to be a free tier three, and the Coddle buys back. Oh, my. That is painful for Maus. Yeah, it should be. You know, um, normally, oof. Easy shrines as well. I mean, we're talking about a really yeah. big power spike here for IG because I think you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but, you know, Burning, he's got his 10-second BKB. The Legion also has a 10-second BKB. With an open set of racks like that, they can, you know, sit back, perhaps wait for Roshan to respawn, then fight there because they know that the OD yeah. is going to be fairly ineffective during the next engagement because two of the more, more important heroes on a team who don't have blade mails that you want to hit are both going to be magic immune. So yeah, it doesn't really get any easier for Mouse at this point. They're going to have to hold out for a pretty long time. We're talking like multiple BKB usages so the OD can start to kind of become useful again. But the fight can be over, you know, in the blink of an eye. Yeah, normally we'd say a coddle pick off, not the biggest of deals, but in terms of defending high ground and warding off those pushes, the Illuminate is kind of the tool that Mal's rely on. And unfortunate that he opted to buy back there because it didn't really do anything. I guess the buyback ensured that they wouldn't commit to killing barracks, but I don't think IG were looking to commit to that anyway. I mean, they would have been happy with even half damage on that tower, so finishing it off just uh, feels like a bonus. But here we go, they'll move into Shrine territory. This one is available. Well, Mal's maybe a small option to try to pick a fight there and utilize the heal, but they will not try it. They'll let it go. And IG get a little bit of extra money going their way. Burning with the Butterfly. Or, uh, yeah, now queued up. Uh, 4,400 gold, more than halfway there. Another huge item for IG. Yeah, th this is kind of the point in the game where you're looking at, you know, Miles, and you're going, okay, it kind of needs to be a smoke. And the smoke has to catch a specific hero. Like, catching the Legion, for example, would probably be the absolute best-case scenario. You catch a Legion, yeah. you have a similar outcome to what happened when they were fighting around the Roshan pit, because then no one has to be worried about getting dueled. And if no one's worried about getting dueled, then the egg becomes vulnerable. That's kind of the synergy that these heroes offer each other, because as soon as that one guy gets dueled, everyone's going, oh, crap, you know, this guy's just dead. We really cannot do anything for him at all. And we have to watch our teammate die. Then, as soon as that hero is dead, they get a free egg because it's a 4v5. Mm -hmm. And they can't, you know, commit to hitting the egg when they're already down a hero. So, like, the synergy be behind the heroes is actually, like, insanely strong. Way stronger than I even thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah, it's turning out to work quite well in practice. Uh, I was hyping up the BKBs on the Radiant side, but a lot of BKBs on the side of Maus. Uh, all three cores now have magic immunity ready to rock and roll for the next fight. Troll with uh, MKB queued up. For some true strike action as they use a smoke near their shrine. Meanwhile, up top, Madara might get initiated on. Baboka goes in, pops the dust. Remember, he does have the Shadow Blade. BKB, is Madara going to use it? He will. I think he survives here, but pretty costly. Not the way you want to debut that 10-second charge. Meanwhile, on the other side, o OP gets caught. Skylark with the dunk. So, well... It's great for Maus. If it was one for one, maybe not so good, but Troll surviving, at least they pick up a kill on the Ember. It's a pickoff. I'm sure they'll take that. Anything that gives him map control. Um, Madara actually yeah. almost got himself killed too, because he, I don't know if he didn't realize that Bobaka had Diffusal Blade, but he let himself get hit so many times that he couldn't even Shadow Blade. I thought he was going to BKB a lot sooner and just Shadow Blade away, because obviously the mana burn and Troll has one in game. Really, really not an intelligent hero, but he almost died for that. <laughs> 
fortunately for Miles, he, uh, he does manage to escape. So they get the tier one, 34 minutes in. Better late than never. Finally. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, but again, it's map control. It's what they need. Their team is still capable of winning during the late game just because of the scalability of the, the Monkey King and the OD. But it, it's really reliant on Skylark getting that blink. And, you know, to Miles' credit, he's been doing a really good job of getting those initiation and those uh, those pickoffs. Yeah. Roche, about to respawn. He's up, in fact. Dyer has scouted pass. it out, and this could become the focal point of the match now. Radiant drop a scan, and they see the rotation from Mal's, but Boca immediately starts moving into the area. There are some sentry wards down, so he needs to be careful. IG smoked up, thinking that Mal's might just be committed to the pit. Instead, they take the high ground. Now IG with the rotation XXS in the front lines. Here we go. Jumps oh, forward. No. Almost gets the duel on Thug, but no, the Lincoln blocks it. Ricky goes into tricks of the trade. Now Monkey King drops the frames with the ult. My god, what has happened? Drasko, oh, are you lagging as much as I am? Uh, I'm not lagging at all, actually. I'm currently oh, okay. watching well, uh, Madara I'd... get 3v1. It's not yeah, going well for Madara's Mouse. dead. No, it's uh, 2v4. Sorry, as soon as Monkey King dropped his ult, I, uh, I I lost everything. It was like watching Darkseer drop a vac wall on Perfect World. So it uh, <laughs> looks like Mouse just didn't have the resources to take the fight. They will force a buyback, though. Axe, the only one that has one, and that'll be enough for IG just to back out. Well, for those of you who didn't get a chance to see the team fight, unfortunately, even with the uh, kind of botched initiation there from the Legion Commander, not I think he just kind of had a brain fart, or maybe he clicked too fast and just didn't call bird or anything before the duel. Um, they, they just don't have the wherewithal to stand against the, just the sheer farm of IG at this point in the game. Because they pretty much just pop their BKBs, and unfortunately yeah. for Maus, you know, when the enemy team BKBs against your OD, your your core is just like non-effective. No damage can be dealt at all during that duration, yeah. and everyone in IG exactly. is right-click based except for the Ember, and I guess the Phoenix as well. But yeah, the cores don't really care; they just Still. keep bopping you. And now Roche falls. Aegis goes the way of IG. Picked up by Burning. Of course, he's got the Butterfly and Satanic on the way next. Has it queued up with 2,400 gold. There is still a Shrine standing. Burning walks up to the high ground. He's immediately ruled by Skylark. This could be an early exodus to this Aegis of the Immortal. LC blinks forward, grabs the OD, follow-up damage. Not quite there. Venge going to be respawning. Pops the BKB now. Magic immunity all across the board as it's a battle of right clicks. Thug trying to stand his ground. Drops the Astral. A lot of heroes still alive. Monkey King actually the only one in the grave. Things starting to disperse as IG retreat, re uh, reset the fight, and bring down Spartan. Lincoln's now broken on OD. No more healing from the shrine. Ad or Mal's running out of resources as Skylark dies, and OD with a last-ditch effort in the Astral is not going to be able to live, and they will get cleaned up. The only survivor down bottom is the Troll Warlord because he was able to Shadow Blade away. So a uh, sloppy initiation perhaps out of IG, but in the end, works out in their favor. It's another 3k net worth swing. As Troll now initiated on the Lone Survivor, they forced the buyback from the OD as well as the use of the Shrine. Madara will survive for now. Swap back, follow-up damage, not quite there. He pops another Shrine, now the Egg from Phoenix. No way to stop it, Madara definitely gonna be stunned. And that will secure the kill. Meanwhile, on the other side, OD dueled by XXS gets the kill there. And GG is called not a moment too soon as the diebacks come out, Draskal. Overwhelming damage. You know, it's really sad because I actually think that, you know, IG, I feel like they were playing, not necessarily cocky, but they were playing super aggressive. And they made a handful of mistakes that if Maus even had a little bit better of a mid game, I think they probably could have turned this around and won. 